guys welcome to my channel in today's video i'm gonna be going over every single book that's on my physical tbr i have my very large tbr cart here with all of the books that i've yet to read i love book shopping i love spending my money on books i love like going into barnes and nobles and just looking around and typically i walk out of there with one or two books all of these books i am so excited to read but you know we only have so much time so yeah, that's why they pile up. In today's video, I'm just going to be going over every single one of these books and kind of explaining to you why I bought it, why I want to read it, what the book's about. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get into it. I also do want to say I'm still a pretty, I don't want to say new because I have been reading for like two years now. It hasn't been crazy like reading like a hundred books a year. Um, I think in my first year reading, I read, I started reading like six months into the year, which was in 2022. And I think I read like 10 books maybe. And then last year I ended up reading 28, I want to say. Yeah, so I'm not like a huge like have all this free time to read but i do really enjoy reading and so far this year i think i've read nine books so that's pretty good for only being two months into the year reading nine books already so just to kind of gauge um how many books i read how often i read i feel like it's become such a big hobby for a lot of people which is great all right so i'm just gonna start on the top shelf here so First of all, we have the Twisted series by Anna Hong. I have the first two books in the series. So we have Twisted Love and Twisted Games. I always thought this was like a fantasy series, but I think it's just a romance series. There are four in the series. So we have the first two, and then there's also Twisted Hate and Twisted Lies. I have had this series for a very long time. Like I would say probably a year now. Every time I go to my bookshelf, like I never have the desire to pick it up. I think something that puts me off a lot is that a lot of people have said that they are very spicy romances, which I did not know when i bought them so honestly i don't know if i will ever get to these books because spice like super big spice is just not something that i'm really into it's not why i choose to read a book like obviously if there's spice like whatever i like it is what it is i like it sometimes but people have said that this is like really spicy so yeah i'm not sure how i feel about this i'll probably at least give it a shot and read the first one but if, but if i don't end up liking it i'm probably just going to donate this series because i just would not see myself like continuing to reach for it but yeah that's just my thoughts on that the next book we have here is heartbreak house share this is by emily merrill this is one of those books that i am truly so excited to read it's such a short book like it it has 360 pages but the pages are so short this is a book that i heard Rachel Catherine talk about uh, probably like six to eight months ago. I have always wanted to read it. Just the way that she talked about it, she sounded, she made it sound like it was like a really, really good book. And they only sell it in the UK, I think. So I ended up buying this on Amazon and I have yet to read it. I think it's about a girl who is going through a breakup and she ends up moving into a house with three other roommates. And it just kind of goes through how she's feeling, what she's going through after a breakup. And I don't know, I just I thought it just sounded interesting. We have Lucy Scores, Things We Left Behind. I started reading the second one, which is Things We Hide From The Light, which is the pink cover. I started reading it on my Kindle. These books are just so, so, so long. So this is basically a three book series. The first book is Things We Never Got Over, which is the blue cover with the daisies. Really, really popular book, like TikTok, Instagram, all of that. This is a series about two brothers, two sisters. Kind of just takes you throughout the relationships, their life. So yeah, I started reading the second one. I just feel like there's so much extra information that we do not need in a romance book. Like these romance books are almost 600 pages long and I just do not understand why they're so long. And honestly, I just wasn't really interested in the story that much. I feel like I will go back and finish the book. I think I'm like 33% into it just because I do have like the full series and I want to finish the series but then again like if I start to read it again and I really don't like it I'm not gonna force myself to read it because I just don't have time for that honestly who knows if I'll ever get to this book but it is really pretty to have on my bookshelf to have all three of them in a row next we have a Colleen Hoover book this is ugly love I actually started this book I still have my bookmark in here I'm on page 94 I think when I was reading this I, I was still in school so I didn't really pick it up that often I don't know the book just seemed kind of like flat to me I'm sure I've heard a lot of good things about this book I'm sure it's a really good book I don't think that I gave it a fair chance so i still have yet to pick it up 
honestly I forget that I have it on my bookshelf like it's never something that I'm like oh like I have that book I could read that it's never something that I think that so I really should just give this a chance it's a super quick read it's like 300 pages I think I would restart it just to fully grasp like what's happening because I'm not sure I remember that much we'll see if I ever continue that all right the next book I have is The Light We Lost by Jill Santopolo every time I show this book i always say that i love the cover of it i just think it's so pretty don't know what made me pick up this book honestly i think it is a second chance romance so these two people meet in university and then they end up meeting again a year later i always love second chance romances because it always like there's always a history to the characters i don't know what it is about it if there's not like that background or build up it's really hard for me like the author has to do it right for me to really love a book so i mean for example magnolia parks is one of my all-time favorite series i'm currently reading into the dark right now obviously like bj and magnolia have so much history and that's just what makes me like love it so so much so i definitely want to get into this soon next up we have the love wager by lynn painter every time i hear someone talk about this book they always rave about it like i feel like i have not heard one bad review on this book i am truly so excited to get into this i loved better than the movies by her it wasn't like a favorite favorite but it was like a really cute romance so this is actually an adult romance this is about a girl i think it's like a workplace romance basically they have this deal of you know who can find love first next up we have a thousand white kisses by tilly cole this is a ya romance this is also a second chance romance so I know I'm gonna love it. I feel like this was a super, super popular TikTok book. So I'm sure you guys have heard about it. I'm excited to get into this one. I feel like it's gonna crush my soul, but it's okay. The Things We Leave Unfinished by Rebecca Yaros. This is the same author as Fourth Wing. So this is actually a romance book. So obviously Fourth Wing is a fantasy series, but this was published way before that book. I love that it says as seen on TikTok. That's funny. I don't really know what this is about. There's something, I think there's like letters involved in this. I don't know. I don't know a ton about this book but I did love fourth wing I loved Rebecca Yaros's writing so I can assume that I'm going to love this one as well next up we have icebreaker by Hannah Grace another romance book this is a very 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 popular tiktok book this is the first one the second one is wildfire I feel like there's a name to this series but I don't know what it's called I've also heard that this book is extremely spicy apparently everyone on tiktok just really loves spice books so like I said I can take it like sprinkles here and there but not the whole books but yeah i thought the cover was really cute on this and i am really eager to read it we'll see how it goes it's a hockey and like figure skating romance so i think that it will be like a really cool setting like a college setting we have yet another second chance romance this is before we were strangers by renee carlino so this is about two characters who met 15 years ago and i think they meet again 15 years later. I have actually had this book on my shelf for a really long time. I don't know why I have never like reached for it. I need to do a video where I read the books that have been on my physical TBR the longest because this would definitely be one of them. Up next we have One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is about two people who are, I think they're engaged. And then the guy gets like in a plane crash. I'm pretty sure he dies. And then the girl ends up being with her old lover and kind of rekindling that relationship and i think they get engaged and then she ends up finding out that the guy that she was originally engaged to is not actually dead so she kind of has to figure out like what she wants to do and i don't know this book does sound really really interesting some books of taylor jenkins read i love and some books i really don't love like for example i did not like daisy jones and the six at all like i thought it was the most boring book i've ever read i actually did not finish it yeah that was the last book i read of her so i am a little nervous to get into another one of her books again but the concept of the story does sound super interesting and it is like a romance book it's not like a literary fiction or like mm, a lot of her other books up next we have one of my favorite authors ever emily henry this is a book lovers this is one of the only books i haven't read of hers when it comes to like her popular releases i guess i should say i've not read her books from like way back in the day but i I honestly have no idea what this plot is about i just know that i'm gonna love it i love her writing so much like happy place is my favorite book i've ever read in my life and then people we met on vacation loved that book beach read wasn't a favorite of mine i do really want to go back and reread it because i feel like i did not love it as much as a lot of other people but i think if i went back and reread it i might have some newfound appreciation for it but yeah this is the last book I have to read of hers before her new book comes out in April. I'm so, so, so excited. I think it's called Funny Story. 
that's her new release coming out obviously this was all romance on the top here so getting down here we're going more into like fantasy mystery that kind of thing so actually i have books back here next we have the spanish love deception by elena armas uh, this is another book that if i read books that have been on my tbr for the longest this would be another one of them like literally look at the pages they're like yellow because it's been sitting on my shelf for so long i don't know i've heard so many mixed reviews about this book this is a fake dating trope as well the main character in this basically starts fake dating her colleague and takes him to a wedding i think is the concept of this so again we all know how that goes so next we have where the crawdads sing by Del delia owens obviously this is a very popular book if, if you have not been living under a rock then you probably have heard of this book it also did become a movie which i have not seen the movie yet but i've heard so 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 many good things about this this is actually my mom's copy so i really should read it because i've had it for <laughs> I've had it for like eight months probably and I still have not read it. I need to give it back to her, but she has one of my books, so it's fine. Okay, let's go into the second one now. First book we have is A Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I actually have never read any of Sarah J. Mass's books, but this is the first book in the Throne of Glass series, um, which I think is like an A book series. I am so, so, so excited to get into her series. I actually have the full Akatar series, which I'm starting this month, probably tomorrow, honestly, I'll probably start the first books. Look forward to me giving reviews about that series. I'm so excited. Obviously, it's like the most popular TikTok series ever. This is the second book, or this is the second series that I'm going to dive into, which is going to be a big one, but it's fine. I'm excited. I have The Final Gambit here by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So this is the third book in the Inheritance Game series. I started reading that end of last year, so December, which is about two months ago. I really liked the first one. The second one I read on vacation. I really liked that one. And then I actually started listening to the audiobook of this one. I am not into it at all. I think I just need to physically read the book myself because I'm like so lost. I really have not been paying attention to it, to be honest. So I think I just need to pick this book up myself. I do have a general consensus of like what's going on, but I did feel like in the end of the second book, which is the Hawthorne Legacy, I felt like there were so many like plot lines and just so many loose not loose ends but I, like it was just so back and forth and like things just kept like it was like a snowball effect honestly it didn't feel like it was very planned out of what was happening it was kind of just like oh like i'll just add this here for another story concept or it just wasn't really like my favorite although i am like dying to know what happens that's why i want to continue it we'll see how long it takes me to actually get to this book but i do want to know what happens at the end of the series and then with that i do have the brothers hawthorne this is kind of like a spin-off series which this focuses only on the brother story so grayson and jameson's story i like i said i do want to continue the series because i do love the characters like it is a very interesting series. Um, next we have a Scythe here. This is by Neil Shusterman. This is a book that I actually bought for my boyfriend. <laughs> we thought that he did not bring his book to go on vacation so we just stopped at the store and I decided to pick this one up. He said it sounded interesting and I said that I would probably read it after him so this is kind of like a utopian world. Let me read the back to you, um, the little paragraph here. It says, a world with no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery, Humanity has conquered all those things and has even conquered death. But I have seen this around, I think I was, I want to say I've seen Rachel Catherine talk about this book, but I'm not exactly sure. It's definitely different than what I normally read, but I think it'll be nice to kind of branch out and read some different genres. Up next, we have The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. This is a fantasy series. Honestly, I don't know a ton about it. I want to say like once the characters reach a certain age, they have to go to like this testing or waiting period yeah I'll, I'll read the back to you so it says in garnet county girls are banished for their 16th year to release their magic into the wild so they can return purified and ready for marriage but not all of them will make it home alive this sounds like a super interesting concept i've never read anything quite like this so yeah and the cover is just gorgeous this is my favorite color so love it we have king of wrath by anna hong this is the same author to the twisted series up here so this is actually a fantasy though this is another one of those books i would add if i was reading all the books that i've had in my tbr for the longest honestly i don't really know much about this book i picked this up when i was like first building my collection just because i've seen people talk about it i think it's like forced proximity or like pretty much forced to date or forced to marry what is that called i can't remember what that trope is called but basically like in high class societies or like 
fantasy books there are people who are like plan to marry so that's what this one is about up next we have a series that i'm so 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 excited to get into which is the once upon a broken heart series so this is by stephanie garber she is the same author to the caraval series which i did read i want to say about a year ago actually that was the very first fantasy series that i ever picked up i remember people saying like if you have never read fantasy it's a super quick easy like book to get into so i also do remember people saying like you should read that before you pick up this series that is what I did and I only have the first book of this so there's this one there is the ballad of never after which can I just say I can never find in stores like what is up with that I am so confused it's always this one and the third one but never the second book so if you know anything about that please let me know in the comments because I just don't understand I'm excited to get into this one a fantasy series like I said loved Caraval and I've heard people like this series a lot more so I think it'll be really fun Another one by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is The Natural. So this is the first book in The Natural series, which is a four book series, which are actually all on the back here. So we have Killer Instinct, All In, and Bad Blood. This is like a kind of like FBI mystery book. So basically there's this thing called The Naturals Program, and it's kind of like the FBI for kids. Like there's these four I want to say four maybe there's five teenagers they have all of these different skills they kind of help to crack cases and yeah it's just kind of like an fbi within it like a teenage setting so i think that's really cool but yeah i wanted to finish the inheritance game series before i started this one so hopefully after i finish that i can go into this one i'm like i've heard so so many good things about this series so and her books are always like super quick and easy to get into so. all right up next we have the shatter me series i think this is like a sci-fi series i want to say so i have the first two books i have shatter me and then i also have unravel me i love the covers by the way they are so cool i think this is about a girl who basically has like a fatal touch which really reminds me of frozen for some reason like elsa and frozen so yeah she's kind of taken over by like the government i think i'm not sure the politics on it but it says no one knows why juliet's touch is fatal but the reestablishment has plans for her plans to use her as a weapon but juliet has plans of her own after a lifetime without freedom she is finally discovering a strength to fight back for the very first time and to find a future with the only boy she thought she lost forever. This is like one of those really, really popular TikTok series. I keep forgetting like I have this on my shelf. I really do want to read it because it sounds really interesting. All right, guys. Up next, we have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. I'm not sure how to say that last name. <sighs> if you have seen anything about this book, you know that it tears your heart apart. Or so people say. And if you haven't seen this book... This is a literary fiction book. It says National Book Award finalist. Let me just read the back to you because I feel like my description does not do it justice. So it's about four college kids and it says, while their relationships which are tinged by addiction, success, and pride deepen over the decades, the men are held together by their devotion to the brilliant, enigmatic Jude, a man scarred by an unspeakable childhood trauma. A hymn to brotherly bonds and a masterful depiction of love in the 21st century. It is a stunning novel that is about the families we are born into and those that we make for ourselves. I always thought when I read the back that it's about these four college kids and their life throughout college. Reading the back again, it makes it sound like it's throughout their life after college. One thing about this book is that it is 820 pages, I think. It's a very, very long book. So that is very, very intimidating to me, but I did just read a 700 page book, the Magnolia Parks book, and that gives me a lot more confidence to be able to read this. I did try to start this probably like five months ago. I got 16 pages into the book. It's very confusing. There's a lot of characters. And it just takes a lot of brain capacity, but I feel like if I try to dive into it within the next few months, I feel like I could do it. So the next book I have is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This is by V.E. Schwab. I actually just saw Sarah Crowley talked about this book, and I've had this on my bookshelf for quite a while, actually. I don't know the genre of this book. I want to say it's like magical realism, kind of. It's basically about a girl who I think she like wakes up one day and has completely forgotten everything about her life or like everything about herself. I could be so wrong on that, but yeah, I heard Sarah Crowley talk about this book and she made it sound like it was like a, an amazing book So I am really really excited to get into this although it does look like it's gonna be a pretty hefty book So I'm gonna need to set aside some time for this one. All right guys We're finally on the last shelf of this little cart here. This is more I guess these are all kinds of genres down here 
but the first book I have is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is just one of those series that I feel like everyone has talked about. It's a YA series. It's obviously like a mystery. I'm sure it will be like super quick and fun to get into. I always love little like mystery thrillers in between my bigger books. Next book I have is What Happens After Midnight. This is by K.L. Walther. I always forget that I have this book. I feel like I bought this around Halloween time because just look at the cover. Like it just reminds you of Halloween. So this is another YA book. With reading the back, the plot reminds me a lot of Every Last Word, which if you have not read that book, you need to read that book. That book is one of my five star books so so good basically this girl named lily she is the main character it says she receives a mysterious note inviting her to join the anonymous senior class so i think it's like a senior prank thing that sounds super cute and super fun this also looks like it'd be really really quick to read i could actually read this in like may because i feel like that's when like senior pranks are like that's when you're about to graduate so maybe i'll save this for like may time although it does really look like a halloween book i don't know it's just the colors on it. All right, up next we have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I actually brought this on vacation with me last month and I had full intentions to read it, but then i pretty sure I only finished one book on that. It's a mystery thriller book. Actually, my cousin, I believe she just read this not too long ago, and she said that it was a pretty good book. So um, I'm definitely curious to read it. Looking at the chapters, these are really cool. It has like pictures on here. That's actually really cool. It looks very dark and dangerous. It says like now and before, so it's different timelines on here. So that will be fun to read. Next one we have is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. I just realized not too long ago that this is actually a mystery thriller book. So this is about a husband, I want to say, that goes missing. Basically, like the wife and the daughter are trying to find him, find out what happened to him. Next one I have is Local Woman Missing. Basically, I think it's about a woman who goes missing. So... Yeah, the next one I have is In Five Years. This is another one that I absolutely love the cover of this. It's so, so pretty. This is a really quick one as well. Let me see how many pages it is. It is not, it's like 250 pages. Wow, I literally just need to pick this up and read it. This is about a girl who is engaged and I think the whole concept of the book is that she like takes a nap and then she has this dream that doesn't really feel like a dream. It feels like real life where she basically is engaged to a completely different person than she is actually engaged to. She wakes up and she's like, what's going on? Like, what happened? Who is that? Why am I not engaged to the same person? Next book is All That We Never Were. This is by Alice Kellen. Can we just take a second for the cover of this book? Like, it is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it so much. I think this is a YA book. I believe it's about a sister and a brother that have just lost their parents. I think the brother is, like, moving away into a different state. So, basically, the girl is going to be all by herself. Maybe it's not a YA book. I don't really know. But And then she ends up meeting this guy and... Things just take off from there, I'm assuming. I don't know why I bought this. I just, I think I really liked it for the cover. So I really haven't heard like many people talk about it. The next six books I have to show are like all hardcover. First one that I have is Ruthless Vows. This is by Rebecca Ross. This is the second book after Divine Rivals, which is another really, really popular TikTok, YouTube, Instagram book. Basically, this tells the story of Roman and Iris. They are kind of like workplace rivals. In the first story, there is a typewriter. The main character, her brother, goes away into the army. So there's basically two gods and her brother goes and fights for one of the gods in a war that they're having and she takes this typewriter and she decides to write a letter to her brother. It ends up getting in the hands of Roman, which is her workplace enemy. Her story just kind of takes off from there. So this is the second book to that one. This is one of my favorite covers ever. It's literally so beautiful. The first one left off on a huge cliffhanger. So I'm really, really excited to see how this story continues. This is most definitely going to be one of the next books that I read. I think I'm going to read the first book in the Akatar series and then I will hop into this one after so depending how much i love the first book of the actor series i might continue that if i really love it but this is definitely on my radar for sure 
Up next we have I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which I had full intentions of reading last month, but I, did, I literally did not read like any books last month. But this is her memoir. So many people have said this is such a good book, like just very eye-opening. I was a huge fan of iCarly growing up. Like I watched all of them probably like five times. Like I just love that show so much. So I think this will be a very, very interesting way to see kind of behind the scenes and what her life was really like growing up. This is called None of This Is True. This is by Lisa Jewell. I just bought this not too long ago, actually. I'm not quite sure the concept of this. I th From reading a little bit of what this says in here, um, it sounds like it's about these two people who basically have the same birthday. One of the main characters is a popular podcaster. So it says, Josie has been listening to Alex's podcast and thinks she might be an interesting subject for her series. She is on the cusp of great changes in her life. Okay, I definitely remember hearing people talk about this. What? Is this like a mystery thriller then? I don't know, but... I think it, it's definitely a cool concept, so. Next one we have is A First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. I honestly have no clue what it's about, so I'm gonna read this here and I'll let you know. Well, okay, this is quite interesting, actually. So this is basically about a girl who goes undercover and she's trying to research and know more about Ryan Sumner. I don't know if he did something bad or like what happened there, but looking at this, you would think mystery thriller, but now I don't know. <laughs> The next book I have is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. This is a book that I actually picked up from one of my local bookstores. It's like a used copy, so it was only $9. Catherine Center is one of the authors that I've always wanted to read. I've heard so, so, so many good things about her. Just that she writes like really good literary fiction. But now that I'm reading the back of this, this sounds like more of a romance. You know, another one of those things where I'm like, I really should read. This is about a girl named Cassie and she starts to work for like a fire department I think. She basically meets this guy and it says Cassie can feel her resolve slipping and it means risking it all. The only job she's ever loved and the hero she's worked like hell to become. It says never date firefighters. <laughs> So this will be a interesting book. I really want to read some of her other books like The Bodyguard. Um, what is the new one that she just came out with? I don't know. I'll put it up on the screen, but yeah, I've always wanted to read one of her books. Next one I have is also um, a used book that I bought from that same bookstore and this is called Mary Jane. This is by Jessica Anya Blau and I've heard a lot of good things about this one as well. I think this is about a girl who basically has grown up like very, very sheltered and just not able to do much throughout her life growing up and she basically starts babysitting for this family and just kind of really learns a lot, learns more about life and all of the fun things that there are to do in life. In return, she has a front row seat to a liberal world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, not to mention group therapy. <laughs> Caught between a lifestyle she's always known and the future she's only just realized is possible, Mary Jane will arrive at September with a new idea about what she wants out of life. This sounds really interesting. Okay guys, we have one more series which I've talked about a lot throughout this video, so. I'm sure no one will be surprised that I have the full Akatar series here, so I am super excited to get into this. I've had so many friends and just obviously so many people like online talking about this and saying that I need to read it. I am finishing up Magnolia Parks. So I'll probably finish that today. I have about 80 pages left of it and then I'm definitely heading into this one. I'm always so intimidated by these books because they're so long. But just finishing, I keep talking about this book, but finishing a 700 page book like I just did almost gives me so much confidence to start to read bigger books. I honestly don't know much about it because I've tried to avoid spoilers, but I know it's going to be great. So I also am like very overdue for a fantasy book. I have not read a fantasy book since end of last year or so. I'm excited. Anyways, that is all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. Bye guys.